You may have heard of something called the butterfly effect, how one small change can alter the world around us. Well, a new book, Fluke, Chance, Chaos, and Why Everything We Do Matters, gives extraordinary insight into how our world works and how random events can affect our futures. I had to sit, had the opportunity to sit down with the author, Brian Kloss, to discuss his inspiration behind the book, including his personal fluke story. Brian Kloss, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Thanks for having me on. All right, so what, what inspired the book? You know, I think there's a, a sort of feeling that we all have that the world is falling apart all the time <laughs> and faster than ever before. And I also think that there's this tendency we have as humans to sort of stitch together neat and tidy stories to explain why things happen. And my argument in the book is that actually there's a lot more randomness, a lot more chaos theory that can help us make sense of how the world works. And so this book is trying to correct this idea that everything always happens for a reason. Sometimes things just happen. And I also think that we have engineered a world where we're more prone to flukes and things falling apart faster than ever before. Okay, so let's take that, for that first part because you have a personal story um, that relates to that. Talk about that. Yeah, it's a story of a tragedy from 1905, a little farmhouse in Wisconsin. And a, a woman uh, has a mental breakdown, probably postpartum depression, although they wouldn't have called it that at the time. And she unfortunately uh, ends up killing her four children and taking her own life. And her husband comes home and finds the family dead. And the reason this is in the introduction to Fluke is because this is my great-grandfather's first wife. Mm. And he later remarried to my great-grandmother. Now, the, the weird thing about this is I found this out in my mid-20s. And quite literally, I wouldn't exist if not for these uh, children being killed. But also, you would not be listening to me. And this is chaos theory, right? The fact that 119 years later, this tragedy has led to this conversation. We often just write these things out. We imagine they're noise, right? But actually, the world works together works in these mysterious ways where you have extremely bizarre ripple effects through the mists of time. And that is also true for politics and for history. Okay, so now talk, now talk about politics, because um, it certainly feels like everything is falling apart, and it feels like, in some instances, by design. Yeah, so I think there's a few things that we've done in order to make it more likely that the world will, will, will sort of feel like it's falling apart. And that part of that is that we've optimized to the absolute limit. So my favorite example of this is the Suez Canal boat that got lodged in the Suez Canal and caused $54 billion of damage with just one gust of wind twisting about sideways. So we've designed systems that are so brittle that when anything goes wrong, any noise comes into the system, things can fall apart very quickly. Now, I also think it's important to think about our modern politics. I mean, there's some speculation that the moment that Trump decided to run was when he was joked about by Barack Obama in yep. 2011 at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. But also when you look at the 2020 election and you look at the map of, say, Georgia, one of the crucial states, there's a little swoop in the county-level election election results you can see on the map. And what that is is basically the coastline from an ancient inland sea 65 million years ago where phytoplankton settled around that coastline. It made the soils extremely rich. And then when the slave trade got started, that's where people set up plantations. And the demographic uh, manifestation of that today is that's where a lot of the black voters in Georgia are clustered. And those are some of the counties that ended up carrying 2020 for Joe Biden in that state and also the Senate for the Democrats. And you can actually visualize it from an ancient inland sea from the Cretaceous period. This is the way the world actually works. And we always pretend, oh, it's just A to B. There's five variables that make sense of everything. The world is swayed a lot more by flukes than we can imagine. Holy <laughs> it's just It just rocked my world with, with, with that example. But, you know, you take the view, and, and it comes through in, in both the answers you just gave, is that we control nothing but influence everything. Expand on that. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the uplifting aspects of, of the book, is that there is all this chaos. There is all this sort of randomness. And that means that this illusion of control that we're told we have, the American dream, by the way, is built on this illusion of control, right? It actually is not true, but what we do have is we have influence because our actions ripple outwards in unpredictable ways. And so everything that we do has an unintended consequence as well as an intended consequence sometimes. And the fact that every joyful moment in my life is derived in part from a mass murder 119 years ago, I think illustrates that point. But it also is true in politics where you have these sort of random occurrences. And the opening story of the book is a story of a vacation that a couple takes to Kyoto, Japan in 1926. 
19 years later, the husband is the Secretary of War, and he goes to President Truman to take Kyoto off the target list for the first atomic bomb. So the reason why Hiroshima gets destroyed instead of Kyoto is because of a vacation that one couple took in 1926. And these stories abound throughout history and politics, but also in understanding the ways that flukes affect our own lives. And, and one thing that you say, you, you, you touch on, is that, you know, pe when bad things happen, people say, well, that must be what God intended. And you posit, well, what about the good, th the good things that happen? Can't we, can't we say that as well? Yeah, so psychologically, we are allergic to explanations of randomness when bad things happen. When calamities happen, when you get diagnosed with cancer or somebody breaks up with you, there has to be a reason. We have no problem accepting positive events as being random. So when people win the lottery, they're very happy to say, I just got lucky. And of course, causality operates the same way, right? It's not like cause and effect has two different models depending on whether it's positive or negative news. And so I think this is something where we need to make some room in our lives for understanding that sometimes there is randomness. And if we pretend otherwise, we can actually make some quite significant decision-making mistakes. So this is where the lessons are important for navigating an uncertain world. Brian Klaas. The name of the book is Fluke, Chance, Chaos, and Why Everything We Do Matters. Thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Thanks for having me on. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.